Hey, welcome back. I'm starting a weekly beat battle track challenge. Stick around to the end for more info. Let's talk about how to step outside of standard chords and scales. A typical chord formula would be anything in a major or minor key that uses any combination of the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, and the six chord. These chords could be in any order. These chord progressions are really useful, but they almost always pull the ear in the direction of popular music. It's difficult to use them without creating a sense of storytelling, even if the music is instrumental. Often, we don't want to take the listener on a dramatic ride. Sometimes we just want to establish a vibe and stay there, perhaps with a little movement to keep things interesting. In order to do this, we need to do two things. We need to step away from the major and minor scale, and we need to think about chord progressions a little differently. Let's change up our scale concept. There are more scales than just the major and minor scale. One of those scales is very useful in electronic music and hip-hop styles, the Dorian mode. A mode is just another term for a scale. Modes are the predecessors to our modern scales. In fact, the major and minor scale were once just two of many modes. Modes are a tricky concept at first. I'll give you a quick description just to plant the seed. But let me know in the comments if you want a deeper dive on modes. Let's take our major scale. When we start on the first note, and go up an octave, we have the scale. You're probably familiar with this idea. But we could start on any one of the other notes. For example, let's start on the second note, D, and go up an octave. This is a new scale. This is a mode, the Dorian mode. Take any major scale, start on the second note of the scale, and that will be the Dorian mode. Since each scale has seven notes, we could do this same thing on each of those seven notes, giving us seven different modes. Let me show you each of those seven modes while keeping C as the root note. C is the one of C major. If we use the notes of C major and go from C to C, we get the Ionian mode, or what we call today the major scale. C is the second of B flat major. Using the notes of B-flat major, if we go from C to C, we get the Dorian mode. This is the scale we're going to be using for the rest of the video. C is the third of A-flat major. If we use the notes of A-flat major and go from C to C, we get what's called the Phrygian mode, which is a type of minor scale. C is the fourth of G major. If we use the notes of G major and go from C to C, we get what's called the Lydian mode, a major scale variant often referred to as the brightest mode. C is the fifth of F major. Using the notes of F major, going from C to C, we get what's called the Mixolydian mode, a mode that's heavily used in blues although it is not the blues scale. C is the sixth of E flat major. By using the notes of E flat major, when we go from C to C, we get what's called the Aeolian mode, or what we call today the minor scale. C is the seventh of D flat major. Using the notes of D flat major, when we go from C to C, we get what's called the Locrian mode. As you can probably see from the names of these modes, they're from a much earlier point in musical history. Since we're going to be using the Dorian mode for the rest of this video, I'll show you a more direct way to create it. Take the major scale, lower the third note and the seventh note by one semitone. Now you have the Dorian mode. Now let's break out of the typical chord formula. Instead of using familiar chord progressions, we're just going to use two different chords. Both of these chords will be based on the Dorian mode. We'll start with C Dorian. If we build a chord from the root, we get C minor 13.
This is the natural sound of the Dorian mode as a chord. We won't extend the chord this far though. We'll just go up to the seventh, C minor seven, using the Dorian mode. For the second chord, we'll go up one semitone to D flat Dorian. Remember, D flat and C sharp are the same note. If you want a breakdown of how to build chords like this, check out this video. Already you can see that this is pretty different from any typical chord progression. C minor and D flat minor have almost nothing to do with one another. This is where the fun begins. Let's take a closer look and see if there's any notes in common between the two scales. As different as these scales are, there are two notes in common, E flat and B flat. Let's take a closer look at E flat. Over C minor, E flat is the third, the minor third. But over D flat, E flat is the ninth. The third and ninth have very different feelings. What happens if we emphasize the two notes that the scales have in common, E flat and B flat, while changing the chord from C minor 7 to D flat minor 7 underneath? Now we get the movement of a chord progression, but instead of it taking us on a journey, it's just rocking back and forth between these two harmonic areas, staying within a single vibe. A typical chord progression is more like the full plot of a movie, whereas this kind of small harmonic motion is more like a cool shot of our main character. The same note takes on a whole new color depending on the chord. You can do this with any two chords always using the Dorian mode and building the chord off of the root of that scale. The more related the scales are, the more notes it'll have in common, and the more options you'll have for notes that you can ride on while the chords change underneath. This is kind of like how a camera angle can change the way that a character feels even though the actor hasn't moved, or how a potato chip tastes different whether it has barbecue or salt and vinegar on it even though the potato has not changed. Let me know in the comments section what your favorite potato chip flavor is. And better yet, do it without any context. That way anyone reading the comments before watching the video will be perplexed. Now let's build a whole song using two chords, two semitones apart, starting with F minor nine, and then moving down to E flat minor nine, both using the Dorian mode. By using different chord voicings and rhythms, we can create motion and groove. Also, from the top notes of the chords, a melody will emerge. Shift the E flat minor 9 chords so that they happen before the beat. This is called rhythmic anticipation. Move the first one two 16th notes before the beat, and the second one one 16th note. Repeat the F minor 9 chords so that they play on beats 1 and 2. Repeat these chords again, the first time on beat 4, and the second time 1 16th note after beat 4. This is called rhythmic delay. For each of the second F minor 9 chords, move the top note down one octave. These create a new melody on top, though the chord progression hasn't changed. Now repeat the E flat minor 9 chord, twice on the first and once on the second. Since F and E flat are two semitones apart, we can connect them by inserting the chord in between E minor 9. This isn't really adding a new chord to the progression, it's just chromatically moving between the two chords to get back to the beginning of the loop. All we are trying to do here is get the chords to groove and break them out of that square downbeat box. For the second E flat minor 9 chord, cascade the notes to break up the blockiness. For two of the chords, we'll double one of the lower notes an octave higher. 
This creates a more interesting melody in the top notes of the chords. For a final touch, arpeggiate the notes leading up to these doubled notes. For the final draft of this song, I played these chords on guitar. A note that F Dorian and E flat Dorian have in common is B flat. In F Dorian, B flat is the 11th, and in E flat Dorian, B flat is the 5th. Strings play this common note over both chords to help glue the somewhat unrelated chords and modes together. There is still chord motion, but the common tones enhance the single vibe aspect of using harmony this way. The bass line dances through the Dorian mode of each chord. When the F minor 9 chord is playing, the bass plays notes from the F Dorian mode. And when the chord switches to E flat minor 9, the bass plays notes from the E flat Dorian mode. First, let's start with the basic rhythm from the chords using only the root notes, F and E flat. Next, look for places to add octaves of those root notes. Now look for places to add the fifths of each chord. C is the fifth of F minor 9, and B flat is the fifth of E flat minor 9. Now use E to chromatically connect the two chords. Lastly, I added a bit of flavor by launching the bass line up to the third and second up high over the F minor 9 chord. the MIDI from my chord track to my funky synth instrument. I deactivated all the notes except for the ones that I felt created an interesting and tasteful melody. All of these notes are the top notes of those particular chord voicings. This was just one of many possibilities here. This is one way you can step outside of typical chord progressions. Choose any two chords, minor chords with the Dorian mode, and take the notes that they have in common for a ride. Of course, you can use other scales and modes, and you can use more than two chords. Get wild with it. We're kicking off the weekly beat battle track challenges on Sunday, December 18th. Your submission must include the stems from the song in this video. It's open to all Patreon members. Patreon is where you can download the stems, as well as other materials from the videos on this channel, project files, samples, and more. We're also launching our Discord, so make sure to get in on that for all sorts of fun stuff, as well as perhaps some alternative ways you can get involved with the Beat Battle track challenges. Also, if you'd like to take a one-on-one -on -one session, email me at jarenlessons at gmail.com for rates and scheduling. All the links and info are in the description. As always, stay musical, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.